Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Service Monster. My name is Joe Kowalski, and I am your host. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into the Service Monster development process. Exactly how does your idea go from your idea to a real boy within Service <laughs> Monster? Uh, how do we make that feature aware? How do we approve them? And why aren't all of your amazing genius ideas just instantly put into our product. Uh, but before we do that, some housekeeping. And instead of Adam, Michael's with us today. Yep. Uh, Adam's like, what is he doing? Surfing or playing guitar? Like, what Hanging is he out. doing? Just know. chilling? Taking a much deserved break. Yeah, a little nap. Much deserved little vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So, uh, yeah, we miss him, but we have brought uh, Mr. Michael in to talk about the new release we did this week. Yep and any updates with Service Monster and some of your questions on Smug. So what do we have today, Michael? Um, well, first off, uh, new release this week, version 6.3.5, uh, has 12 new features in it, uh, 19 bug fixes. Um, nothing crazy big in terms of features, but a lot of little uh, feature improvements and bug fixes that um, I think a lot of the a lot of the users are going to be very happy about some of them. They've been waiting for for a while. Yeah, yeah. Some and, of them are and smug. I, I'll take things. a minute. To say I know we got off to a little bit of a rough start and had to throw a number of hot fixes in order to get those whack a mole down. And I wasn't really going to bring that up, but uh, I don't think it can go unnoticed. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about our development process. Yeah. So when you go, hmm, how how can you do that? You just put bugs in it, so we have something to talk about. Marty, <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, you know, we're, we're going to dive into that too, if you're interested, but yeah, so it should be good by the time this thing airs. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> should be all fixed and smoothed over and great. Um, so the first thing that, um, this was a common one, Adam touched on it last week a little bit is batch converting order types. Um, that's been released. I know a lot of people in smug were talking about that. It's been a pretty common thing. Um, do you have anything you want to say no, it's about that? Cool. You go yeah. to a order list and you select a bunch of things and you say, convert these all to, and, uh, off, off they go. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty useful for people who maybe aren't as, um, consistent with their catch up. Um, yeah. Yeah. They their won't catch, play up catch up. Yeah they, yeah. they need to, cause I think, you know, a lot of people, they get busy and it's hard to, um, you know, stay caught up on some of those, um, converting the order types. And so. And Seems that like will it's good for do some things, right? Yeah. Um, trigger certain actions in the system, mm -hmm. but payments and that kind of mm -hmm. thing, you're still going to be responsible for that. Yeah. Uh, we are going to be implementing other batch conversion stuff. Um, the system is flexible enough to allow us to do things like a batch update on a single field. So okay. let's say you wanted to select, select a bunch of accounts and turn their lead source to a specific thing. Mm -hmm. right? This is the first go of a system that will handle that. And once we understand how that all works, implementing that uh, and extending those capabilities is relatively simple. Cool. So yeah, look for that in the future. I know. That's exciting. Um, we also had some UI updates to the activity panel screen. Um, I'm not totally sure what they all were, but I know that it's just, you know, improvement for people, the, the whole experience um, of peop of whatever people need to use on the activity panel. They're, yeah. It's going to be drove, a little nicer for them. I drove most of those. Yeah. Um, I went through it, and it was it was all right. Mm -hmm. um, Ethan did a pretty good job gluing together the concept, um, but okay. there were just some smoothing, yeah. polishing yeah. that I wanted. Uh, I think that helped make it a little more usable. Then some people had reported some issues or misunderstandings, and we got those cleared up as well. Mm -hmm. So I think overall, uh, it's just a much smoother process, and you can kind of put a check mark in this one and call this 1.0 done for okay. the activities panel. Cool. Um, another big thing, uh, feature addition, is it, uh, we added a data tag specifically for um, SMS so that users can send their invoice page to the customers via text. Um, my understanding of it is that it is a, it's a different data tag than the one that was used um, to send over the, over the internet, like in an email. And I think before was the issue that um, we had some HTML showing up, and it was because it was the same template that was being used, or the same, um, yeah, I guess the same template that was being used in emails was being used in texts. Therefore, the HTML was not showing up like it should have because it was a text, not an email. 
Yes. I think that was it, kind of roughly. Yes, all yeah. of that is true. Yes. But you did say a lot of words. I did. So let me see if I can shrink that down. Uh, I was trying to figure it out in my own brain as we were going there. It's kind of confusing. Texting a link to payment is fixed. No yep. longer shows the gobbledygook. You just get the link that they can tap on to yep. make the payment. However, you must change the data tag in your SMS template to use yep. the new data tag which doesn't have the gobbledygook. Yep. You do that and that will go away and your users will be able to click on that from a text and pay their invoice. Yep. Booyah. Seems pretty simple. Just got to make sure that whoever is using this, that you make sure to get use the SMS template for the texts, the email one for emails. Yep. They are separate. They do the same thing, but yep. separate functions. Um, but I, I think everything should be good to go with that now. No more issues. Um, probably better just to have them separate anyways. So, yeah. you know, if people want to change the wording or whatever. Right. Because you need, easier, you know, yeah. you need all of the gobbledygook in an email yeah. Yeah. in order for it to show up correctly. Yeah. So, But not in text. So. No. Yeah. Um, for bug fixes then, um, there was a Google routing issue um, that should be fixed now. Um, I remember seeing some smug posts about that. I believe it was. Um, I don't remember. Some, it was something with activities case. when people added in an activity in their schedule, then it would stop. It wouldn't show jobs after the activity for hmm. the day. It was a weird just issue with that. I don't really okay. know why, but yeah, All that's better. apparently hopefully is better now. Yeah. should be. Um, we'll see if anyone reports any issues with that, but I think that'll be happy. So people's schedules are all showing up at once on Google. Um, also had a bug fix for the reminders list. So I believe it was just an update to make it more organized and make it more similar to SM5. Um, one of those things where users wanted it to be, um, you know, but the way we did it in SM5, I guess, was the way they liked it. And right. just kind of do it again to that. Yeah. yeah. Why didn't yeah. you give that? It was yeah. great. Yeah. I mean, if it worked then, I mean, might as well, you know, it's newer in SM6, but yep. people like it. You know, that's what we want. Awesome. Give them a product that they like and can use right that's the goal <laughs> that's certainly the goal <laughs> certainly the goal yep um all right well that's it for version 6.3.5 um there's a lot more uh bug fixes we're gonna and features in it we're gonna have a, a release notes post out um early next week okay. about that uh, brenda is currently working on that to really get it dialed in and get all the necessary information in there um, so it should be out by the time they have, hear this podcast. Yeah, it should be out. And, yeah. it, and it'll be linked in the in the Show description. Notes. Yeah. Um, on YouTube for the audio. Unfortunately, you'll have to like actually go to our social media to find it. But, uh, you know, oh, oh no. But anyways. Um, or you could just go to servicemonster.net forward slash blog. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's the easiest way yeah. if you're going to yeah. have to go manually. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, let's go on to our smug discussion now. So we have a few posts from this past week. Uh, first one's from Eric. Um, Eric posted about um, basically a feature request uh, that has come up a lot. I've seen come up a lot in the past of wanting to keep the work order number the same for recurring jobs. You've seen um, this a lot? Yeah, well, I've heard about it a lot, I guess, really? from... Um, Adam and Javi both okay. from anyone because we, we have, a, we have, we have some loop. customers in the janitorial services oh, industry gotcha. and they all ask for this type of feature because they bill tend to bill monthly. Therefore, they need to have my understanding of it, at least from reading the comments is um, that they want to have multiple, multiple jobs all on the same work order so that they're all the same invoice so that when the invoice, it's just one thing, but it has multiple jobs on it, I guess. Yeah, it's in it's my one understanding. Order, yeah, multiple jobs through a recurrence pattern. Yes, yes, that's the deal. Yes, so being able to just like recurrence is set up a recurrence pattern, mm -hmm. but instead of it making an, a new invoice every time, yeah, maybe it makes an invoice on some frequency. Yeah, like monthly. I'm kind of yeah. tossing it in my head, kind of where we might want to use that, but mm -hmm. we should be able to make a minor modification in recurrences, which will behave this way, but there'll be a number of things we'll need to address, mm -hmm. including some automated systems uh, and, you know, again, resources. Mm -hmm. So he asked me, what's the chance of it getting in? I was like, on long enough timeline, 100%. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> but, I, you know, I'm trying to mull it over right now. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that's good. I think the comments on that too, 
Um, you you chimed in quite a lot there. And yeah. So there's, well, you just, there's solid answers You there. just upvoted it by like 50 by saying like we have a whole class of clients mm-hmm. that have been asking for this yeah. feature. Yeah. And that's my understanding from yeah, Adam I was, and Javi I both. wasn't aware. So that's yeah. super I don't know awesome. how many there are, but I have heard it repeatedly. Yeah. That's um, great. Yeah. And Jordan asked about um, basically I think what he was trying to do is voiding, he was voiding work orders. Um, for whatever reason, and it was removing them from the schedule, but they still needed a record of the job. Um, he was giving kind of use cases as uh, for callbacks, prepaid commercial work. Um, apparently, SM5 did not have this problem, and so he wanted to know more about if it's possible to have a record of the job still exist even when you void out the work order. And I think the comments, there were some um, some kind of workarounds that people had. Um, yeah. I thought this was another bug, to be honest. So now I'm trying to reorient myself. Um, or that use case where it was the result of the user using SM5. Let me that look. Adam and I talked about last week. So that's why I had that kind of war. Oh. So this is a different one. So let me explain let me what I think it should do. I don't know if this is what it does, to be honest. Uh, but we'll be making some changes on that pipeline between mm-hmm. what we expect and uh, what it actually does here shortly. Um, if you void an order, any jobs that are upcoming are automatically set to canceled. Mm. And that way they're removed from the schedule. Okay. Visits that have already been marked as complete should stay on the schedule. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure if SM5 renders that way and then SM6 simply doesn't draw any of the jobs. I'm not 100% sure. So I know we had some discussions I'm just not recalling it off the top of my head yeah. right now. I know it's been sent to yeah. development for as a tracker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you. I was looking at the comments on it right here and I pulled it up, and you you were involved in that mm-hmm. kind of asking for the use case with that. Um, it sounds like everyone's kind of on the same page. It sounds like you were able to kind of identify what they um, were looking for with that. Okay. Um, it says it's on something to do with, with rework. Um, yeah, I'm not totally sure what the use case is, but they um it's well, in like there. Like he says yeah. here, callbacks, prepaid, commercial yeah. work, etc. Yeah. I think they just wanted they wanted to still have the job like on the schedule even if it was voided, like it show like that we'll it's be voided for a setting at some yeah. point. Or you that know, sounds pretty do- show, pretty show doable, void, right? show yeah. jobs from voided orders yeah. or something. I mean, that should be something that's doable in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A setting okay. should be yeah, and I think that that would just again help out people with more niche use cases that maybe we're not accustomed to as much. Yep. Um, that'd be good to have that. 